my initial response in the beginning was, I don't know what I'm going to do. That was my initial response. We homeschooled. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm in a panic to a degree, but, but God, but, but God built me for a moment such as this. It was, it was nerve. I was nervous. I was scared. I was um, frustrated. I was angry. A lot of negative emotions for sure was what, what it was like. Uh, and then um, it was also encouraging to see that um, how well equipped my late wife Jen had prepared them. And when it first happened, you know, I definitely wanted to die. You know what I'm saying? Let's just be real and be honest about that. Uh, because it was all of a sudden, you know, it was it was within a week, you know, that she had got diagnosed with with, uh, with COVID. And so, uh, you know, for and then I have we have four kids together. Brave Hearts community, this is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of A Scary to Remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly. We have a special guest with us today. He is building, encouraging, and holding men accountable to be husbands and fathers that impact their lineage and community, as well as giving insights to women. There's so much more to this, man. This is Dr. Glenn. How are you doing this evening, sir? I'm doing well. How are you doing, sir? I'm good, man. Thanks again for taking some time to be a guest on today's segment. Absolutely. Yes. I need to be here, especially with the topic we're going to be covering. Not too many people at uh maybe one other person has maybe asked me to to talk about um this particular topic. Mm -hmm. We're going to discuss navigating grief, a healing journey after loss. Um, mm -hmm. a sensitive topic. I do believe that it's worth addressing. I was watching your content, went through all the videos. And oh wow! Yeah, man, it was it was heartwarming. It was touching. Um, and it helped me to prioritize what's important. So thanks for mm. that content. I appreciate you. That's what's up. For sure. You you spoken publicly about the loss of your wife and, and the first marriage. How do you recover from something like that? Um, how do I or how do does one? Uh maybe kind of a different question, but if I had to um give my take in, in what I've done. Um, the, sh the, the main thing is that my faith is in Christ. And, and so I was very much committed to Christ before Jan passed. And it's what held me together to even start navigating, to move forward. Um, so what I did was, you know, and when it first happened, you know, I definitely wanted to die. You know what I'm saying? Let's just be real and be honest about that. Uh, because it was all of a sudden, you know, it was it was within a week, you know, that she had got diagnosed with with uh with COVID. And so uh, you know, four and then I have we have four kids together. So uh I thought about them, so that was a help. Um and then also um I have an an you know a mindset of um Fixing the problem, you know, I can deal with the emotions at a different time, but the but the logic of things is that I got to get things done to make sure that my kids are good, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, I said, you know, I don't know if this resonates with many people. I'm a, I, I'm <laughs> my wife will laugh, <laughs> my current wife she'll laugh at it when I tell her that I'm an athlete, right? So I think about it as because I was an athlete. You know, I didn't play collegiate or anything, but I was I played basketball since I was seven. And I don't know if you ever had an injury. And when you have an injury, if you don't start taking care of it immediately, then you're going to have some ramifications of it later. So I treated it like an injury and uh, I began to get counseling probably like two, two weeks later, mm -hmm. two or three weeks later. My kids were in counseling as well. And I went to um, group counseling. And I went to independent counseling. So I would go with, I would go to group counseling on Wednesday nights. And then Thursday morning, I would have uh, 
independent counseling. And then that's why I started the podcast. I mean, well, I started that particular part of the podcast, which was vlogging. Are you a content creator, YouTuber? Maybe you've interviewed someone on your video podcast and they said something that was really, really good. Or maybe you said something that was really, really good. Well, enter Opus Clips. This is the platform that I use when I want to share 30 to 60 second video clips that I can share with the whole world. I mean, you can share those clips on TikTok. You can share them on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram Reels, like these 30 to 60 second clips that Opus Clips can give to you with the click of a mouse. All you have to do is upload the recording and boom. Opus Clips within maybe 10 minutes will give you 15 to 25 different clips with description on the side of the video. And it also gives you like a title and it gives you a rating and let you know how powerful that clip can be used on social media from a rating of 99 all the way down to maybe 60. This is a phenomenal platform that has took my social media marketing to another level. If you want to level up your social media game, go in the description below right now and get the link for Opus Clips. This will not disappoint you. And uh, and because I vlogged, the reason why I vlogged is crazy. The reason why I vlogged, because <laughs> I was like, God, there's no way you want me to do this. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want nobody to think that I'm trying to monetize my experience. But God was like, who cares? <laughs> Honestly, you've never really cared about what other people think. So why do why would you do that now? Right. And so uh, I was doing it because a lot of people was asking me, how was I feeling and how were my kids doing? And so. Uh, I mean, a lot. I, I I used to go to a pretty big church and we were pre not prominent in the church. Right. Mm -hmm. And so anytime I went, I'm getting stopped and can't even really get to where I need to get to. You know, so I started doing I started vlogging to let people know what was going on with me so they can know how to pray. And then they wouldn't have to stop me so much. Mm -hmm. So it was almost somewhat of a uh, here, here's my wounds. Here's how I feel. So you ain't, so don't you don't gotta worry about asking me. You go watch the video. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so then, so um, it's a long question, right? I mean, it's a it's a simple question, but the the process is not short. So it's long. That's why I'm giving you a long winded version of what actually took place. And you're welcome to interject at any point. And so what happened uh, as I'm transitioning? All those things happen. Uh, I was in council maybe three, four months, three, four months every week. Uh, and then also I had a, a really large support system, you know, uh, from my kids were my support system. I had uh, some homeboys that would check in on me. I had I even started talking to people that had experienced the same things that I did and seeing how how did they navigate through uh, losing their spouse. Some of them hadn't recovered, you know, but some of them had. And so they I, I leaned on them. My counselor had lost his spouse six months prior to me losing mine. Mm. Think about that for a moment. Right. He lost his spouse six months before I lost mine. And he helped me navigate how I would be feeling. He understood where I was at and when I was there and where I was going to be going. And that, I think, helped me tremendously because that was not planned other than God. And um, and then um, I, I would say those are the main things. So counseling, mm -hmm. um, independent counseling, group counseling, my kids and vlogging and just really kind of nursing the injury. Right. I started working out. You know, I was at 190. I'm a little dude, I, but I was at 195. Right. I started working out and I dropped down to uh, 180, you know, and so I got back in the gym a little bit. So those things kind of helped my mind kind of kind of get together. So I was I was still studying the Bible or reading. I did lose hope in God, but not to say lose hope, but I was disappointed in God and I was 
asking questions. So all of that, th- now that man, you having me go back for real mm-hmm. with just this one question. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I'm gonna pause. I mean, it, so that's what I did. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and you 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 asked a, a, a person that like to talk, uh, uh, opening the question like that. <laughs> so. it, it, well, exactly why I have to have you on the show because. Uh, and I wish we would have got this earlier, you know, maybe around the holidays and stuff like that. Mm, you know, yes, yeah. it's, it's that time. You know, even still, with it being a new year, you just never know what people are going through. Uh, I love the platform. I do appreciate the transparency through your process because I think you had maybe four videos, maybe four, four, four or five videos, and just I just talking watched. about the grief process. Yes. No, I had more than that. Oh, yeah. I, probably, yeah. oh. I mean, they probably scattered, but I think I had about 12, 12 to 15. Oh. Uh, to, uh, yeah, that I did because I would do them at random times. It was it was just like, oh, man, this feeling is bananas. Like, you yeah. know, uh, and so I, I would I would I didn't have any consistency of it. Mm-hmm. It was just like, OK, I think I think God is telling me I need to go now. You know, there was a morning that I woke up and just with it was just worship songs on my heart. And so I just listened to the music while I'm telling people about what my emotions were, you know. So it, it was um yeah, so it, it was it was very therapeutic for a person that likes to talk. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> you, you talked about your raising four kids. What was that like for you to go through? losing a spouse and then raise four kids man that's a phenomenal question um what was it like it was um mm, my initial response in the beginning was i don't know what i'm going to do that was my initial response we homeschooled mm-hmm. So I'm um, I'm I'm in a panic to a degree, but but God but but God built me for a moment such as this because I'm I'm a I'm a uh, I have been teaching in the uh, public school system for like eleven years, so I had an idea of what it, it should look like. However, I'm having to deal with them losing their mom, right? So what it felt like was that I was not going to do a good job. That's that's what it felt like. But I knew that uh I needed to at least be at some some space where I could help them navigate their journey because theirs is harder than mine, mm-hmm. in my estimation, because they can't get another mother. You know? Mm-hmm. Um and so uh so what was it like? It was it was nerve I was nervous, I was scared, I was um frustrated, I was angry. A lot of negative emotions, for sure, was what what it was like, uh, and then um, it was also encouraging to see that uh, how well equipped my late wife Jen had prepared them. Mm-hmm. So, because of how she had prepared them school wise, they wanted to start school like she passed August thirteenth, twenty twenty one. School was going to be starting in two two more weeks, right? She was, you know, and they wanted to start school. Mm. <laughs> so, so I had to order books. Remember, we homeschool, so I had to order books. I had to make sure that, uh, you know, everybody was on this on where they needed to go, you know, and and so it was very frantic at that at that time, to say the least, mm-hmm. and um. But as things got through, it was it was it was very hard mm-hmm. that first that first year. Um, and then within the first year, I met somebody. So it, it made it, it made it even harder because uh, here I have kids and I'm trying to make sure that they're good. So I sent them to counseling as well, you know, and they enjoyed that mm-hmm. um, because they got to talk to other people. But for them, they felt like they could be able to to minister to others more so than others minister to them. Like I got some dope kids. 
Mm, that's probably some of the best on the planet for sure and that's beautiful i love that um yeah i only can imagine oh my god um you talked about meeting someone which you you remarried uh how did you know you were ready oh geez say i do it (laughs) (laughs) that's crazy okay I mean, this is. Did you, know, you finish your question? Mary, right? I, I felt like I knew where it was going. Did you get to finish your question? <laughs> yes, I did. Yes. Okay. <laughs> How did I know that I was ready? Okay. Uh, in the beginning, when I met, I didn't think that I was ready. Mm. I didn't think that I was ready. It because it was like six months, almost to the date mm-hmm. uh, of when I had lost her, lost Jen, right? Mm-hmm. And and what uh, what happened was. That I knew that I was ready is because after two months or so, I began to feel this um, wanting of companionship and being very uh, frustrated that I was wanting this and feeling like a, a sense of betrayal, right? Mm. Uh, what helped me, which most people will probably never have this happen, was that four months prior to Jen passing, we had just had a conversation about what it would look like if one of us was gone. Right. And we've having that conversation because of COVID, you know, we didn't know what would happen, but if it happened, then we know where we're going. Like that was the conversation. But then she brought up the point of like, what, what would, um, so would you, would you want me to remarry if you, if, if you, you uh, pass away first? That was, she asked me. And I said, no, of course not. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I can't do nothing about it, but that's but you're asking me my my thought process right now. Right. Mm-hmm. And she and she she didn't laugh for nothing. She just at that moment she said, Well, I want you to remarry. Mm-hmm. Right there in that moment. She's like, I want you to remarry. And all I ask you is that um that she loves my kids. Mm-hmm. She's like, that's it. I was like, really? I said, okay, well. That's dope. But then, you know, I wasn't thinking that it would be anytime soon. So that part helped me as well. Right. Because she said the kids are going to need a mother. Mm-hmm. That one of the things that me and Jen were doing were uh, we were trying to set a precedent. Uh, not like there hasn't been others, but we were purposeful in being a black married couple that that were that was homeschooling their kids, teaching them the Bible, uh, educating them and all the things that that go along with that. And we were not pro black. We were just saying that the black people, y'all not, y'all not marrying for whatever reason, but we can show y'all what we're doing. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And so that, that, that part of her mindset, we had that in sync. Right. And so she knew that I would probably need a wife. She knew that because I'm a husband. Mm-hmm. That, that's, you know what I'm saying? That's how I operate. My mind works like that. Mm-hmm. And so uh, how did I, how I know that I was ready was when um, I started talking to other women mm-hmm. and uh, I was enjoying their conversation. I was like, okay, cool. You know, and I, and I went out with a couple of women and I was like, oh, okay, cool. I'm going to fall back. Hey, this ain't for me. <laughs> this ain't for me. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the type of guy going to have to pay for dates. You know what I'm saying? Like that costs money. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I could afford it, but I was like, I don't want that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't want that. And so, uh, and then I meet her, uh, after maybe like two or three days after, um, two or three days after I said that I was talking, I had wrote down to God and I said, I said, listen, this is the type of woman that I'm going to need. I don't know when you're going to provide her. But like, I'm not gonna be able to find her. I'm not gonna be able to find her. My uh, and then my mentor, uh, my 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 uh, my counselor at the time, he was saying, "Listen, what's gonna happen is that there's gonna be a, a, a overlay a overlay of you loving Jen, and then you beginning to like this like another woman." That's what he was telling me, right? I say, like, but that'll be a long time from now, though. Like, I ain't, you know, he said, like, "Well, you don't know that." Yeah, he said because God's timing is not our time. You know, and so I say, OK, cool. I, I'm listening to you. Right. And so then I end. And, and so when I caught when uh when we connected, we connected over Facebook. Right. Over a, a controversial conversation that I had, like I had wrote a post mm-hmm. about what women wear. She responded. 
We talked uh, 11 times throughout the thread. I hit, I said, would you like to talk? Hit in the back chat. Uh, she ghosted me for a day. She, then I came back another day and I was like, hey, I thought you wanted to talk. She was like, cool. I said, you good right now? She's like, yeah, I'm good right now. We talked. Uh, and in the first conversation, I said, listen, I'm not trying to, be, I'm like not trying to be with you. Like, I'm not trying to holler at you. And then I just want to have a really good conversation with a woman, with a beautiful woman. That's that's what it is. You know, women don't really understand that. <laughs> right. It's like, that's shallow. Okay. Okay, cool. That's shallow. But that's what it was because that's what I was used to and I couldn't find it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, think about it. Every, most people in, in general are not intellectuals. Mm, right. Very true. <laughs> All right. Very so, true. so I find someone that's able to dialogue with me through through Facebook. Impressive. That's imp that's that's impressive, right? And so I had to talk. I said I had to talk to her. So, um, and she she was doing capital letters and periods and punctuations in her stuff, bro. Come on, man. People laugh at that, but that's a, that, that's how I was thinking. Of course. And I went to go check out her pictures. I said, oh, she. <laughs> She's a nice looking lady. I said, oh, cool. You know, uh, and then because this is going on, how did I know? Mm -hmm. Went on the uh went on a date with her, mm -hmm. and it was just cool. I said, all right, right what's up? But the first conversation was four hours. Mm -hmm. Second conversation was three hours. Still not thinking anything other than I just want to be hang out with with a big one. Third date, homie. Uh I meet her. And she's paying for the date, I remember. And um, and she she's I, we say hello. She gets up uh from the table and it hit me. I was like, ah, oh, I like this chick. Oh man. I began to like have somewhat of an anxiety, but still enjoying the moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's when I knew that I was kind of ready because she was that different. Then I ain't talked to a lot of women, but I had come. I, I know men know what what one look like, and they don't need a lot to figure out what it look like. Mm. You feel me? If you've had one before, you know what it's gonna look like again. So that's when, and then when when that um uh there was a moment where there was an intertwining where I was like, I like her like that. Mm. That's when I knew that I was kind of ready. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't stop talking. And we talked every day from the, the, the first time we talked. We have not had a day that we not had a conversation, even though we may have been upset at each other. Yeah. But there hasn't been one day that we haven't talked to each other. So that's when I knew. That's mm -hmm. the long version. Yeah. And for sure. I, I met my wife on Instagram. So I I, ah. I, yeah, I get it. You know, we played we played a uh, like like tag. Well, I like tech. Yeah, we yeah. like each other photos. Yeah, stuff. we like each other pictures. Yeah, we went back and forth, and that's what's up. Yeah, and then that's when I was like, you know what? Okay, she like a couple of my pictures. Okay, it's on because I like right. all of her pictures. I'm like, I'm about to shoot my shot because after <laughs> four, after four pictures, yeah, she's saying shot. so. That's what's <laughs> up. What, was she in the same city? No, I was in Arizona, and um, because I was finalizing my divorce. Um, and uh she lived in texas so wow we, uh we got together dated long distance six months uh we got married six months later it's t it took another six months until i relocated to texas though so um, that's wow mm -hmm. that's what's up man that that that's the so so how did you know you was ready oh yeah especially going through a divorce yeah. Yeah, great question. That's right, because you 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 produce content too, so you I ask do. these kind of questions. Yeah, yeah she I'm typically was, the moderator. Yeah, right. She was similar to your situation, cause because her and I would, and I'm dating myself. Uh, we were on Skype. Whoa. So yeah, <laughs> dating myself, and we were. I, I would talk to her and say, "Hey, you want to have Bible study together? You know, we can have Bible study on Wednesday nights or whatever." She was like, "Yeah, I'm cool. I'm down for it." So we start having Bible study together. Uh, we'll talk about, "Hey, we're gonna be in the Book of Ephesians," and then we read chapter one, and then we'll talk about chapter one you know, that night. You know, and then we start reading books together. We start reading books on marriage, and and we read like intellectual. 
Yeah, and so that's read like 48 Laws of Power. I mean, we read all kind of books. And that intellectual piece, man, that man, mental stimulation. Yes. And I'm 12 years older than her. And so at the time, I was 40 and she was 28. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, um, even to this day on Tuesday nights, um, no, Monday nights, we have uh, we read books together. We we reading a book on boundaries now. So we put the kids to bed, you know, at 30, 45 minutes, we read together. Hey, what did you see in this chapter? We still do that. So that's dope. I, I need to try to figure out how to do it. We reading the Bible together mm -hmm. right now. Uh, and we did it a couple of times before, but we we committed to um, uh, reading through the Bible chronologically for the year. Mm -hmm. And we talk about, you know, what what's going on at that time. So we have been doing that. Uh, we do it independently. Yeah. But then we come together to talk about what it is that we read. So, yeah, that's what's up, man. That's dope, bro. Yeah. Uh, how many kids you got? Four is four total. So my wife had a, a son. He was three before we got together. And then my, my daughter from my previous marriage was 14 at the time. So uh, and then we have two together. That's what's up. So okay. the la the two we have together, they see both. Ministry. I see where you're at. <laughs> yeah, they they have autism, man. So that's a that's a, a story within itself. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, okay. man. I, got you. I see. I see where you at. Um, you know, because how the how my content started was that I was interviewing dads. I seen that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've interviewed over a hundred dads, right? And so, uh, they actually made me better when I interviewed them, and then I end up transitioning to, um, you know, I I transitioned from doing that uh con content with dads to doing panels because I was on a panel, um, and it seemed to be the thing at the time. So, but yeah, I enjoy talking to dudes that, that have the dad experience for sure. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And then I seen, I was on your page. I was like, man, he had show Baraka on. I said, show is one of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when I was in a Christian rap group for, uh, about five to seven years, something like that. Yeah. And, uh, and we, we opened up for, for, uh, we did stuff with show. No, we, was he in the group at the time? We did. We definitely did stuff with Lecrae. You know, and yeah. so yeah, I, so I had reached out to him when he was doing the book or whatever. Yeah, I, I interviewed R. Swift. I interviewed uh, oh. Ruslan. Yeah, yeah, I interviewed Ruslan before. Uh, he was he was at thirty thousand, mm -hmm. thirty five thousand when I yeah. interviewed. Him. Wow. So, yeah, I, I I interviewed some heavyweights for sure. That's what's up, man. I, I'm not on your level yet. I'm working on it though. So listen, I'm not on other people's <laughs> level. Don't, don't let me be the, the stand. <laughs> you know no, it's, it's all good. Uh, I want to do this bonus round. Th there's no wrong answer. We this is the section where we just kicking it. I bet I'm down with that. All right. So, what's the biggest mistake you see husbands make in marriage? The biggest mistake that I see that husband make in marriage is understanding that it's a union, it's a covenant, right? That um, the woman is the weaker vessel. Yeah. So because she's the weaker vessel, you're not going to be able to operate with her like you would one of your boys. She's not a man. You know what I'm saying? So you def you have to speak to her at, like she's a woman, just like you have to speak to your kids like they're kids, right? Um, and so I think that's the the biggest thing that I see is that men miss out on understanding that weaker vessel just means that uh, they need you to be their emotional stability as well as their support system. Right. Not that they're weaker in, in like mental mental uh, ability, but just saying you're supposed to operate as a spiritual leader for a reason. You know what I'm saying? And so I think that's the biggest thing that they don't operate as a spiritual leader. They they try to they they would prefer that she she be okay with going to church, but not him. Or yeah. her doing Bible study, but not him. Right. That's what I that's what I see, especially in this space. Mm -hmm. I want her to be submissive, but I don't submit to nobody. <laughs> right. 
So then how do you know what submission is supposed to look like if you're not submitting to nobody? And E and I and I would talk to dudes, I said, E even dudes that are not Christian, but in another denomination or faith, I would say, or uh doctrine, their gods tell them that <laughs> they need to be submitting to God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Whether it's mm -hmm. Islam, Buddhist, uh Muslim, I mean Scientology, probably, you know what I'm saying? All of them say that you need to be serving a God so that you can see what that looks like behind you. A great leader knows how to follow when needed. A great leader means that he knows how to delegate when needed. Right. So I think that's what's missing. Dudes want what it is that they're not being. Mm, that's good. Yeah, I, I post <clears throat> I post on Twitter the other day. I said, you know. Everybody want to be Black Panther until it's time to do what's best for Wakanda. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up. That's, that's a very good connection. Yeah. yeah. That's a fact. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. that's, so, good. Yeah. that's good. Yeah. Uh, from seeing your parents' relationship, what did it teach you about marriage? That I didn't want to be married. You know, my my uh I grew up as a in a single parent household. I mean, my mom and dad were married, uh I think she may have been 19, but he was like 20, excuse me, I think he was like 23 mm -hmm. or something like that. And uh, they got a divorce when I was four. So I, re I remember negative things about them being married, you know? And so, uh, and then, uh, and then my mom got remarried, my dad got remarried and none of it looked appealing. Then, you know, I had aunts and uncles I have a lot of aunts and uncles and only one of their marriages even seemed like it was something to even look forward to. Mm -hmm. So what it taught me was um, that's not, that's not, a, that's not a good end goal, mm -hmm. but not until, I don't know if this is your next question, but not until um, I started, I don't know what happened. Oh no, it was crazy. Mm -hmm. Though I had a, a light bulb moment, uh, around the time that I was dating, I was dating Jen, and I was like, "Man, I want to be married." <laughs> I was like, "But, but that was the the struggle." I was like, "I don't know if it's you though," mm. you know. And I said, "I can't, I can't keep you here. I can't keep you here, and I'm not sure it's you." But I knew that I wanted to have kids, and I knew that I did not want to have. I wanted to be married and having kids. Mm -hmm. Like I knew that, so that is what sparked me to want to even be open to doing it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So uh, if it had not been for what I, it had to be God, because it just came from nowhere. Cause I didn't see any good ones. Mm -hmm. What about real. you? That's real. Uh, my parents, oh my God, I, I, I didn't see a healthy relationship with them. Uh, they, uh, they would be fighting, um, uh, my dad, he was he was married, so mm -hmm. he he was in between two households. Uh, I had to raise my little sister, and my mom working full time, so I was a little man at the house. So it was like I really didn't get to see. Uh, I mean, it's four of us total. I didn't get to see what a healthy marriage looked like until I saw my brother get married. Okay. And when my brother got married, he's, uh, let me say I'm 46. He's around six years older than me. That's when I was like, oh, this is cool. I want one woman that I can build with. Mm. And uh, he set that first example. And then when I gave my life to Christ, uh, my pastor, I seen him and his wife. Then that's when I was like, yeah, I want to do this. Mm. It is about those examples, though, right? So yeah. That was that's why, like, right now, even with, with Kendra, you know, mm -hmm. and my, my current wife, like, I was like, listen, I when it came to the point in time to be be ready to be married to her, uh, that was that was God saying, listen, this is the one, you know, this you you it was crazy how that happened. But um, but I, I needed to be ready for her. Cause, cause I had to be her husband. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I had to be her husband. And, um, that 
so and so I think being you know being married for we was married for 14 years we have been together like 20 mm. and having some ideas of being a husband then was is, is somewhat helpful but then at the same time it's not yeah does that make does that make any sense no no I no I, I get it because there, there's a question I do want to ask you anyway go ahead yeah but I'm just saying so it was like okay uh how did I do that? Because I'm having to start over and 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 I have a different personality now because I have grief, mm. right? And I have four kids that are grieving, right? And I'm at the time I was getting my doctorate degree, right? And so it's like, and I'm homeschooling my kids, mm. you know, and I'm having to make sure that everybody gets to where they need to get to. And so I was doing a lot. Wow. And, and then and then, you know, going to see her, mm-hmm. trying to make sure that I build that relationship, you know. Uh, so it, it was important to me, though, that I get out of the streets and hear God to be like, OK, you need to make her a wife. But I was scared, you know what I'm saying, because yeah. of what they say about the streets, mm-hmm. that, that women will play you until... Mm-hmm. And, and and to get what it is that they want, you know, and then they'll leave you. Yeah. So that that was a that even though I had a good marriage before, looking forward, what everybody was saying was that you weren't gonna have one. Mm-hmm. So so that was that was a part of the um the nervousness moving forward though. Yeah, understood. Is who who makes a better spouse? Someone who's never been married or someone who's been through a divorce and they're trying this thing again. Who who makes the better spouse if you have to choose? That's it. I like I like those type of questions. Oh, oh um you know that it depends because of the variables. I would say the one who wants it the most. Mm. So if the single person objective is marriage because there's a duty involved in being married and I'm going to fulfill my duty based on what God says is my duty and I'm willing to uh, serve the other person, I'm willing to serve, like I'm willing to serve that person. And knowing that there's going to be trials and tribulations that come along with that. And that's even with bad examples, right? Mm -hmm. But if I'm focused on how God operates as it relates to the scripture and being a a husband or being a wife, then I would say that person is going to be better than the individual that had a divorce because their perspective of marriage is, is one of turmoil more than likely. Because they got a divorce. Mm. Mm. However, if I if I flip it, mm. I can say, well, this person that got a divorce, they learned their lesson. They saw what they did, they did wrong. Not so much about what the other person did wrong, but they recognized what they did wrong. And they can say, you know what, I went to therapy and I see and I'm in my word and I can like it's important to operate from the position of the word because God designed marriage. Nobody else did. Right. So if I'm able to go to the creator, right, you know, and say, uh, how should I operate in my marriage? And how do I be a husband? I want to be a husband. I want to be a wife. So help me do that. Then I would say the experience of the the divorce person saying that I see the mistakes I made. I'm not going to make those or I'm going to adjust my behavior. There are some things that I did do well, but there are some things that I can say I didn't do well. At least I have that to look back up on. Mm-hmm. Right. Like for me, even though I was I'm not I wasn't divorced, I lost somebody. Mm-hmm. I'm coming from that my that you know the marriage was good, but I also see my flaws. Mm. that I see what I needed to work on, what I missed in that one, Mm -hmm. that I could now be over here, right? So you may not ask this question, but I'm going to answer the question that you should ask. If you do it, you don't ask it, Mm. right? 
uh, I think that I'm a better husband now than I was to Jen. And Jen felt felt like, in her own words, that she was lucky to have me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? And the reason why I would say that I'm a better husband now is because I can see what service needs to look like for, you know, I'm, I'm very particular. Uh, I pay more attention to service, even though I was serving Jen, I paid more attention to how I can serve Kendra. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I think the person that has the experience and uses the experience to their advantage would be better equipped to be married again. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Yeah. The person that has never been married before though, their desire to, say I'm going to hang in regardless of the tough times they could have also got great counsel they could have had seen a good marriage before they could have went to talk to people they could have went to go uh you know get the uh independent counseling for themselves they may be more well equipped because they don't have the toxicity mm-hmm. of a of a failed union mm-hmm. you feel me so that's why I would say it's, it's determined by the willingness of the individual who would be better. That's good. You no, know, that's what that sounds like a plan is safe type of situation, though. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's, it's, but I, I, I would personally say that it's the like that person, but I would say if I didn't have any of those caveats, yeah, I would say the person that uh has never been married before. Got you, got you. Yeah, my my therapist, uh, my marriage therapist told me to uh in my journal that every day you write down what did I do to wow Clarissa that's my wife name what did you do to wow her today Mm. and I was like oh okay yeah so you know it keeps me on my toes keep my head on the swivel what did you do today to wow her uh I got the boys my kids I got their clothes ready for therapy tomorrow she usually does that I wash and fold the clothes. I just put them up. So for her, yeah. you know, it's like that's just one less thing she has to do because she packed the boys. Uh, she get the boys clothes ready at night. Okay. So when she come home, she's at Bible study now. So when she come home, she see the boys clothes laid out already. That's one less thing she has to do. So uh, <laughs> that's my wow for today. <laughs> hey, listen, that is a wow when you take something off their plate. Mm-hmm, exactly. Is it easier to love yourself or someone else? <laughs> I like these type of questions. Is it easier to love yourself or to love someone else? I think it's easier to love yourself. I mean, we selfish creatures. You know what I'm saying? We we prioritize ourselves more times than not. We we would like to say that we don't, but we think about ourselves first, which is not bad. I mean, if you're not well, then it doesn't matter. Uh, if you're not well, how can you help others? You know what I'm saying. So I I, I would say, I would say uh, yourself for mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. Last question. What's the oh, best? So fast. Last question. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, the, yeah. No worries. Uh, yeah, because I'm gonna have to bring you back for another <laughs> segment. Because there's, if if I get started on the next one, we'll be here for four hours. If I get started on the next one, okay, you said I talk a lot. I got you. That's true. <laughs> go, go, ahead, go ahead. You can ask the last question. I uh, I'll give a Twitter version. <laughs> so I'll bring you back for part two. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is the best part about being you? <laughs> the best part of being me. Mm-hmm. Is that I know God uh look out for me for mm-hmm. real. Like I uh and and I've known that to a degree, but at the beginning of this year, uh I had a moment where I was listening to Tabitha Brown and she was giving her um synopsis over the past six years or something like that. And mm-hmm. it made me reflect mm-hmm. on the things that, that God has um allowed me to go through and t- to also to 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 maneuver through as well right so uh Jen is the 
losing gyms is, is the hardest thing, but I've had other failures, if you will, mm -hmm. along my journey that I was able to see how he got me over those heels. Right. So, and then my name is Elijah. Mm -hmm. My first name is Elijah. My middle name is Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like the, for those that, you know, Emmanuel means God with us. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and I want to say, uh, Elijah is the Lord is, it's not Yahweh. It's Je Je uh, Je Jehovah. The Lord is Jehovah. I think that's what that means. Mm -hmm. And, uh, or oh, Jehovah is Lord. Jehovah is Lord. Mm -hmm. And so those connected together and I even choose my name. Right. But my parents, my dad, he saw something mm. you know, or he listened to mm. either, either way. Uh, it allowed me to see that God, God got me. Mm. And, and that's one of the best parts of being, being me. And, and also that I know how to uh, get through hard, hard times. I know how to get through hard times. And I, I think that's what a lot of people miss. Matter of fact, uh, my son told me, because I, I, I talk to my kids, I don't know how, how how you talk to your kids, but I think every dad should have like those real good conversations. Yeah. Just sit down, you know, if you don't know what to ask, go ahead and Google questions to ask your kids, okay? Mm -hmm. Right? That'll give you a, 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 somewhere to start. So one of the questions I asked um, all of them is, what do they see in me? Mm -hmm. Right? What do they see in me? Or uh, uh, better yet, I said, what do you see in me that's in you? Mm. What do you see in me that you see in you? And uh, I have four. Jo there's Gianna, she's 14. Joshua's 12. Ethan's nine, about to be 10 in a few weeks. And Jordana's five. And Joshua said, determination. Mm. I said, yeah, because he is that for sure. Like, I would say that by him. Determined. My son named Joshua, too. What? Yeah, my son named Joshua too. Oh, that's what's up. That's yeah. what's up. And Great so, minds think alike. But anyway. Great minds think alike. And it is an ordinary name too. So, but it's a dope name. Yeah, yeah, right. That's that. So yeah. when he told me that, you know, that helped me see that he's watching how I move through through life. And when I asked him why does he see me, what 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 makes him see me as determined? He said. You know, you you lost mommy and you was able to find you a new wife. He said, I see that as determination. And you help you're raising us. Wow. Mm -hmm. Man, that's beautiful. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, that's 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 how you end a, a segment right there. <laughs> I <laughs> I, I want to, uh, Dr. Glenn, I want to acknowledge you for uh, sharing your testimony to the world, uh, sure. your experience and your loss and uh, going through it in real time and sharing it with the world, uh, which takes a lot of courage and to be as transparent as you were. Um, and even still this to this day. So I want to acknowledge you for that. I want to acknowledge you for uh, opening up your heart again. And to say yes to, to love again um, and to continue to be an example for your family. And uh, I want to acknowledge you for your platform as well, for doing the whole humble dad thing, uh, which is awesome. Had a chance to be on your platform as yeah. well. Great conversation pieces. So uh, I want to acknowledge you for those things. Let yeah. Let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. Tell us about the the, the podcast, the YouTube channel. Tell us about everything, the clothing line, everything. <laughs> For sure. Uh, uh, as far as the clothing line, you can go to uh, humbledad.life. Um, as far as the podcast, I'm on. Uh, we're on Monday nights, uh, Facebook, YouTube, um, and it's on Monday nights at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, and the topics that we talk about are centered around uh, being marriage minded, you know, and our conversations are always uh, professional, genuine. Uh, and even when there's a disagreement, uh, it is done in a in a very, uh, I guess, a, a, a solid demeanor. You know what I'm saying? There, there's no I don't allow the, the attacking and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. But I mean, but if you're going to disagree, you're going to have to be able to, to stand your ground because I'm not coming to save you. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not coming to save you. And I'm not going to let anybody else come and save you. You, If you make a statement, <laughs> you got to be ready to defend your statement. You know? And so that's the type of platform that I have and that I'm building and that I'm trying to uh, help up, make, make sure that other people see that you can have a healthy dialogue and disagree and still build. So, you know, that's what it is. And you can, and you can find me on all platforms as it relates to Instagram. Uh, it's Humble Dad uh, Legacy. Uh, YouTube is Humble Dad. And then on Facebook, you know, uh, it's Elijah. But main places are Instagram and uh, YouTube. Instagram and YouTube. Okay. I'll have everything linked up in the description below so people can buy the merch. They can subscribe to the podcast, all that other good stuff. Brave Hearts community, you heard it here. Make sure that you go get the gear, subscribe, all that other good stuff. If you are watching this via YouTube, hit the subscribe button, share this with a friend. You never know what someone is going through. Uh, this episode can help someone. So make sure you share it. It can be in the group chat. It can be friends at work. It could be anywhere. If you are listening to this via podcast, make sure you hit the subscribe button as well. Leave us a rating and review. By doing so, it puts you in the drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't like free things? So make sure you leave a uh, honest rating and review. It's all good. I don't take it personal. So let us know how we're doing. This is Sean Heineman at it's Scary to Remarry with special guest Dr. Glenn. And we are out. Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of A Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarry, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here. But anyway, go watch another video. Thank you.